Now, this is a follow-up on the PowerPoint where we describe the treatment of venous ulceration of the foot. You'll see in this PowerPoint a one-month follow-up on the patient. Now, this is a patient before we did a procedure. A tears technique was done on August 19th, 2021. Now, the tears technique is simply ultrasound guided foam sclerotherapy into the refluxing vessels closest to the ulcer bed. The goal is to decrease venous pressure locally and promote normal arterial perfusion at the dermal layer. Now, I prefer to do percutaneous foam sclerotherapy through a small vessel. This can be a spider vein or it could be a subdermal reticular vein. A vein light is very helpful many times in identifying these potential targets. You have to be close to the ulcer bed within about 5 centimeters. Direct the needle towards the ulcer bed and inject slowly. However, in this patient, due to the marked inflammatory changes, I could not do the percutaneous technique since I did the tears technique, which simply is ultrasound guided to a deeper vessel. Most of the work published on venous ulcerations misses the actual pathophysiology. Venous ulceration is a local phenomenon of systemic problem. Many papers report on wound exudates, cultures, enzymes, tissue fluid, report on different ways to treat the hypertension, such as peripheral ablation, deep venous investigation, stripping of the saphenous vein, thermal ablation of the saphenous vein, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. However, venous ulcerations occur in the dermal area because of transmitted pressure. If you can block that transmitted pressure at the dermal area, the wound will heal, regardless of what you do afterwards. In my opinion, the cause of venous ulcerations is arterial venous perfusion abnormality that is transmitted from a deeper source to the dermal vessels. You have high pressure in the dermal vessels. You have an alteration of the uh, AB perfusion. Any small injury, et cetera, can cause the skin breakdown with ulceration. If you can decrease the venous pressure locally, the wound will heal much faster. Now this is the ultrasound of the uh, perforator. You can see distally right here, going down towards the ulcer bed, this is still clotted off, and I'm going to show you a minute, the ulcer is healed. There's a perforator there. There's a lot less flow in it there than it was before. Um, so this, we're going, today we're going to close off the uh, greater saphenous vein, but this is a nice result. You can see right there, that vessel up here is occluded. These are the digital vessels right here, okay? Go. Now you can see here there's a complete healing of the, where the ulcer was. Uh, this is actually getting better too. Uh, so he's got, we're going to inject a few of these today as well as do the uh, endovenous ablation with our... Now this is one month post tears procedure. You can see the decrease in inflammation is present, the healing of the ulcer. Uh, this is an excellent response. This is what we would expect. In, in these small ulcerations, larger ulcerations will take a little bit longer to heal, another month or two. But you can see this is an excellent result. The patient was uh, pain-free within about four days of the procedure. Now, in conclusion, when you see a patient with venous ulcerations, try to do percutaneous foam injection to vessels in close proximity to the ulcer if possible. Inject the foam through a 25-gauge butterfly needle. Use a vein light if possible. This will help you guide your injections. You can see veins some, sometimes a little bit better. After you inject, if you can do the percutaneous, check with an ultrasound to make sure you have good foam penetration to the vessels under the ulcer bed. If you cannot do a percutaneous injection due to marked fibrosis or scarring, then you will have to do the tears procedure, which is just ultrasound guided foam sclerotherapy and to refluxing vessels as close as possible to the ulcer bed as, as you can get. Now, if you don't have refluxing vessels under the ulcer bed, you do not have a venous ulceration. This study shows you that we just did that foam sclerotherapy acutely for venous ulcerations 
works extremely well in about 80% of the patients and I think should be the first treatment when you see these patients.